Hello everyone, welcome to this video about global secondary indexes in DynamoDB. In this video I want to explain you first of all what are GSIs and how you can use them to create new access pattern and query in your table. Okay, so first of all let's start with defining what is a global secondary index. A global secondary index is an index with um, partition key and sort key that are different from the one of the base table. It's called global because queries on the table, uh, sorry, queries on the index can um, span all of the data in the base table across all the partitions. Uh, also, like a GSI has no size limitation and has its own provision throughput. So both read and write. Um, a GSI, it's important to understand that it's, it can be created uh, either like a creation time or after table creation. Keep in mind that if you have um, a huge table, a big table, it will take time to create an index because what is happening under the hood is basically that the uh, DynamoDB engine is replicating the table with the new uh, primary key, sorry, partition key and sort key of the index. Uh, there is also a way if you want to follow the progress. It's both you can you can follow the progress of the creation of the index both from the AWS dashboard or there is also like an API you can call on your backend or from the CLI. Um, so when you, when you have to create an index, let's say we want to create an, in an index from the AWS dashboard, what you're going to be asked are the following information. First of all, uh, you can decide to create a, a GSI with a partition key only or partition key plus sort key. Then you have to provide index name, um, then projected attributes, it depends on, on your use case, but you can select all, so to get all the attributes for each of the item when you, when you query the index. Uh, you can select a, a subset of attributes or just the keys. Um, last, last thing to, to set is like uh, the read capacity units and write capacity units assigned to the uh, index. If you want to have uh, like a quick overview on the DynamoDB basics and schema design, uh, feel free to watch my previous video. I'm going to link it in the description. Okay, now with all these concepts in mind, let's move over to an example that I took from the AWS documentation. Um, consider a table here, you can see that on the right side. Uh, called game scores uh, that tracks users and scores from or for a mobile gaming application. Uh, each item is um, in game scores is identified by a primary key and sort key. In this case, primary key is the user ID, sort key is the game title. Uh, you can see like an example how an item is um, displayed. So you have user ID, game table top scores, top score, daytime, wins and losses, and then you have like uh, other attributes. Now let's let's kind of uh, suppose that um, we want to, to write uh, an application to get the leaderboards for each of the games. So like get all top scores based on the game title. Um, as you can see from the table on how, and how it's organized, um, based on the primary key and sole key, um, a query on user ID and game title will be very efficient. But in this case, we want to get the top score information. So we want like a way based on the game title to get the top score um, value. So in this case, since uh, primary key and sole key doesn't track the top score, it's, it's not possible. The only way that we have right now is to use a scan plus a filter expression. So what, what the scan operation is gonna do when you when you run the scan on, on the table? Uh, the scan operation will start scanning the entire table and send back all the items paginated. This, this will of course like encounter a page size limit. So you will need to add pagination in your query, handle paginations, pagination at um, the application level, level Plus, you will have to order your uh, the results, so all the items at the application level. So, based on the uh, each of the page uh, returned by this scan operation, you will need to order by 
game title and top score at the application level. Okay, now let's think about how we can solve this problem creating, um, by creating a GSI global secondary index on the table. So the idea here is that since we have to query by game title and top score, we can create a GSI with partition key, game title and sort key, top score. In this way, we can query based on this um, partition key and sort key. But very important is that since the um, primary key is on the game title, all the items with the same uh, primary key, partition key, sorry, they're going to fall into the same item collection. The item collection concept is very important in DiamondDB. Uh, what it means basically is that uh, items in this, with the same primary key we fall into the same partitions and can be retrieved with a single query specifying only the primary key, the, the partition key, sorry again. Um, I will show an example of this in just in just a minute. Um, so now that we have a GSI, let's make one last step. Let's think about this table as uh, a different view, as like um, a table with game title and top score as partition key and soul key. Okay, so let's see here an example on like how the uh, table has a different view based on the on the index. This is how the table actually looks like based on the uh, GSI point of view that we just created. You can see that uh, the partition key is game title, sort key is top score, and more importantly, it's like based now on the game title, we can get the top score for each of the uh, games. So let's say we want to get like, uh, I don't know, top score for the Galaxy Invaders game. The the query that we will run is just is like this one. So based on the game title we want to get, we specify the key condition expression. So game title equals the one we receive as an input, table name, index name, and then we can set scan index forward uh, as false, which means that uh, the items retrieved by the query will be ordered by the highest top score, so the highest value on the sort key to the lowest. Um, and this is really like an example on how the GSI can help you enabling a new access pattern on your application. Okay, now that we have analyzed like uh, for an example uh, how you can use the GSI, let's let's make a few uh, consideration on the. Uh, GSI itself and how you can use it. So first of all, it's very important to remember that GSI replicates the entire table. So you have to be careful with uh, storage and write codes because every time you write uh, a new item in the table, this results in a write on the GSI. So very important, uh, consider your storage and write codes and remember that uh, the GSI has its own um, RSU and WCU, very important. Uh, next one is uh, consider that the GSIs are eventual consistency by design because as we just said, every time there is a write on the table, they have to replicate the same item on the GSI. Um, I believe that like now, this is not a problem. I think like 90% of the application can uh, cope with the eventual consistency um, concept because let's let's make an example for uh, for example let's consider like I don't know Facebook or Twitter timeline in this case it's it's safely to use a venture consistency because it's not let's say key for the application to get the latest tweets every time I refresh but I will get it eventually which usually is in a matter of a millisecond. Last item is um, choose projections attribute projections carefully. We saw that the index creation time, we can we can decide which attributes uh, we want to display on the index. So when you create the index, you can decide which of the attributes are replicated into the index. Most of the time, you will need only a subset of the item attributes. So make sure you select the only ones that are needed. This will improve read and write speeds and eventually, of course, also cost of, of running the index on the table. All right, folks, it's time to wrap up. I uh, hope you find this video useful and let me know if you have you know, any uh, questions on the comments. Uh, thanks for watching.